Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another Tuesday. Um, I am excited to share again this week, and I'm hoping my little guy will come up and sing with me this week because there's a song that's been in my head, and I really want to share it. Unfortunately, it needs harmony. Um, so just to kind of start and welcome everybody in a good way. Um, I hope everybody's having a wonderful week. Um, I know I'm personally getting geared up to send the kids back to school. It's kind of a, a very un, uncertain time. It's very unsettling in some ways. And I know there's a lot of fears, but there's also, you know, a lot of hope. And um, I, I know we're going to get through this. We get through everything as long as we put our minds to it. So um, just to welcome everybody into the circle today and wish everybody a very helpful and wonderful week. Uh, I wanted to, of course, start with the land acknowledgement, because that is how we always should start, no matter what we do. We always have to acknowledge where we stand so that we know where we're going, so that we can have a good sense of space and a good um, sense of connection to everything around us, including Mother Earth, including the people around us, and including, you know, the space and time. And so I acknowledge that I am a visitor to this land. I'm from Treaty 6. I'm from Muskeg Lake Cree Nation, which is in Saskatchewan. But I live here in Mulkinstis, which is Treaty 7. Mulkinstis means elbow in Blackfoot. It's where the Bow River and the Elbow River come together to meet. And it's a confluence. It's what brings people together. When waters are connecting, when waters are colliding, people gather naturally. Um, there's a power there. There's a strength there. And there's a sense of community there that draws people in and draws people together. Because water is life. And water will um, it'll get cleaned and filtered. We need it to survive. But once we're gone, Mother Earth will be able to take care of it. Um, and so I acknowledge the Blackfoot of Siksika, Gai Nain Patani, uh, the Circe from Susana, and the Stony Nakoda from Morley, which includes Jinniki, Bears Paw, and Wesley First Nations. We're also walking in the footsteps of Metis Region 3, which is why I proudly wear my Metis sash. Sag is that bridge between Indigenous and non-Indigenous culture. And when I acknowledge the land, I'm actually acknowledging far more than that. I'm acknowledging, of course, the families that have been here for thousands upon thousands of generations. I'm acknowledging Mother Earth and our connection that we have to her, the plants and the animals. When we say all our relations, all our relations, it's everything. You know, it's the air that we breathe. That's our relation. The sun in the sky, that's our relation. That's our grandfather, mother, grandmother moon is in the West and we honor her. And so it's really about acknowledging everything, every space um, and every every aspect of creation as part of us when we say all oh, my relation. And so when we acknowledge the land, that's truly what we're acknowledging. We're acknowledging that relationship that we have to have with each other and with everything around us. We acknowledge um, the responsibility that we have, the responsibility to honor all that's happened in the past that has led us to this moment so we don't make the same mistakes again, but also to honor those future generations and respect them and leave a better world for them because this is our world this is theirs so are we going to leave a good foundation for them or are we going to leave uh, a whole hefty lot of mess for them to deal with and clean up and so i think it's really important to think of things larger than ourselves because if we're too inward we forget of everything that's around us and that what acknowledgement does is acknowledges our place within everything and so um, to welcome everybody into the circle, I want to share the Cree welcome song. Traditionally, when we share songs, we sing in rounds of um, four, so out of the four directions of the medicine wheel, which I'm going to talk a little bit about before we commence today. Um, but this song, of course, we sing in rounds of three, and that's so you keep the circle open and welcoming. So everybody completes the circle today. So people can come in and out throughout um, an event if you keep that circle open, and so you don't feel obligated to Stay when you have to leave, or you don't feel obligated to have to stay outside if you arrive late. I think it's important to keep it inclusive, and that's what a circle is a circle is inclusivity because um, the circle can get larger and larger and larger to fit everyone, to encompass everyone in the circle. So, this is why three is so important. Um, and we're that fourth round, we're that fourth round of the circle just by being present. Um, Niasin, which is the Cree welcome song, is from the Napahau um, family from Sturgeon Lake Cree Nation. And uh, I thank them every time I share this song. Um, because this has been, it has been such a blessing to be able to share this song in a good way, to be able to honor and welcome everybody in the circle. And there's such power in those words. And I honor everything that that family had gone through to try and keep this song alive. 
because for many of our songs and many of our generations, a lot of our languages and culture and history and stories and songs were almost lost. But it was those families that hung on to those things and took them underground to preserve them. Those are really, um, that's power, that's resilience, and that's resistance. And so uh, when we sing the Cree Welcome Song, we honor that. We honor everyone in the circle and it teaches us to not judge anyone because everyone's on a different journey, but to welcome them in so that we can learn from them and grow um, and to honor everybody's differences because that's truly what makes our community strong and our community resilient and diverse. And so Miyasin, the Cree Welcome Song, it doesn't just mean welcome, it also means beautiful. Would you like to say anything? Me a sin, me a sin, a sin, a sin, a sin, a sweetgrass helps us 
um, make good decisions. It helps us think. We're uh, really stressed out. We just need to calm our minds. The grass is a really wonderful way to do that. Um, when I have really bad insomnia, I'll drink a little bit of sweet grass tea before bed, or sometimes I'll just smudge a sweet grass, and it actually does calm my mind enough that I can actually sleep, which is awesome. Uh, it's really good for learning disabilities, um, things like ADHD or autism or anxiety, anything like that. Um, PTSD as well. You can work through PTSD with sweetgrass um, and Alzheimer's as well. Um, there was a study done with elders, and they found that the elders that were smudging with sweetgrass every day uh, who were suffering from dementia and Alzheimer's actually had 30% less loss of memory as well as they sort of retain memory and they had less outbursts of sweet grass. Amazing. So sweetgrass, that's for our mind. And so we honor that. In the south, we have cedar. And cedar is a sprig, it's a tree. Uh, it teaches us about that in between. So um, when we look at a, uh, a cedar, it's not quite a leaf, it's not quite a needle, it's right in between. And so it teaches us about honoring and acknowledging that in between. So um, the part of our lives in the South is our adolescence. It's that in between childhood and a, an adult. And so we need that transition time to really figure out who we are. And so it's connected to our body in the South. That's um, why cedar is so wonderful for so many different things. It's antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, and the uh, antihistamine, which is amazing. It has a numbing agent in it too. So if you have a sore throat, you can drink it and it uh, soothes your throat. You can throw it in your bath water and it's really good for rashes or um, allergic reactions. <laughs> like if you fall in poison oak, for example, I just soaked myself in cedar and it was awesome. Uh, well, not falling in poison oak, but the fact that cedar made it not itchy afterwards, that was awesome. Uh, so I use it for pretty much everything. I swear by it. Um, even allergies. I boil it in tea for allergy season. It's great. Eczema. It's wonderful. And so um, cedar teaches us about really honoring and connecting with our body, honoring and connecting with our own past, um, and honoring and connecting with Mother Earth. She reminds us that we breathe. We're reciprocal. When we breathe with the plants, um, they breathe back. So we breathe with them. We exhale, they inhale, and vice versa. And so uh, it reminds us of the relationship that we have with our physical body, but also with all of the animals. Uh, it's really about understanding our place in humanity. And so this is really about a time of our lives where we're selfish, but not selfish because we're learning about how we are going to give back to our community. So it's important to honor you know, a, a youth journey as they're going uh, transitioning and creates from about the age of 12 until about the age between 22 to 24, which coincidentally, scientifically speaking, is when our brains and our bodies stop developing. So awesome. I love it when science proves things. We've done for thousands of years. Um, but that's cedar, and that's in the south, our physical body. That's the summer, because that's when we get outside the most. And even though uh, a lot of life starts in the springtime, it actually grows to fruition over the summer. Then we're going to move to the west. In the west, we have the fall, which we're starting to transition into. Um, that's when we have the harvest. So that's about sacrifice. So all of the things that Mother Earth has grown over the spring and summer, they are harvested in the fall. So that, that, that's that sacrifice. Um, it's connected to uh, water. So we have fire in the east, we have water in the west, and it's connected to Grandmother Moon. Grandmother Moon controls the tides, so this is why it's connected to water. Um, it's considered the women's medicine because women, we cycle with the moon, and so it honors that um, personal ceremony that women have every single month, and it uh, teaches us how to honor um, the life-giving that water provides and how those cycles, they provide life as well. And so I have two kinds of uh, sage here. This first sage I have is, this is buffalo sage. So um, this grows all throughout the prairies and this is what I'm going to use this much today. Uh, and then the second kind of sage that I have is probably what a lot of people will find in like stores or things like this. This is a white sage. It has a, a very strong, dusty, deserty smell. Uh, I used to pick it in um, Arizona when I lived in Arizona for four years. I made some bad decisions in my 20s. Um, but it was really wonderful to be able to learn from elders out there. Some Chakta, um, some Apache, some Cherokee. Just really wonderful, wonderful elders out there. And they would take me sage picking in the middle of the desert. And that's where I learned that water is all around us, even in the middle of the desert. Because um, when I had run out of water, my elders showed me that there were pockets of water under the sage. And there's also um, 
a relationship that Sage has with the captain. So if we're out of water, you just snap off the stage stem, and it almost looks like a straw, and you just pop it into a cactus. Don't crack it open because you'll kill it, but you pop it in kind of like a natural juice box. <laughs> and it's the way that you replenish yourself. And you always make sure that you only take what you need so that when you come back or for the next person who comes, um, it's, it's available for them. You just want to make sure you always take everything in moderation. That's what all of our medicines teach us. They teach us about moderation. And then the last medicine that we're going to um, look at, oh, sorry, yeah, that's our, in the West, it's our emotions. So, uh, so it teaches us how to honor our tears and honor our emotions because without them, we wouldn't be here. Uh, our emotions teach us how to care about each other, how to honor not only ourselves and self love, but how to honor everybody within our community, how to build strong and lasting relationships, friendships, and have strong families, and uh, really beautiful friendships. Without those emotions, we couldn't invest in each other and we couldn't invest in ourselves. So this is why it's a very strong and important medicine. And so that's sage. The last medicine we have is tobacco. Um, tobacco, we gift to elders and knowledge keepers, drummers, uh, singers, storytellers, um, teachers to uh, thank them. We say thank you from our spirit to their spirit with tobacco, because tobacco is a spirit medicine. We don't take it into our bodies type of thing, but sick because it's a symbolic medicine. We pray with it and we lay it down for people to pray for them, or we'll smudge with it, but we won't actually breathe it into our body um, because that would be dishonoring that medicine. It's not meant for us, for us to pray with and to honor in that way, but not actually to take into ourselves. When we um, make any of our traditional medicines, we tend to bring tobacco with us and sprinkle it on the ground. In Cree, we sprinkle it and we let the air, um, the wind take it to Mother Earth. In Blackfoot, they take it, they put it on the ground and they rub it in, so Mother Earth knows it's for her. Um, we do the same things, just slightly different. And like I said, there's no right or wrong way, it's just what feels good to you. Um, and that's different. Um, so the great thing about tobacco too is it helps nourish the uh, the ground. It nourishes those plants and helps them grow back stronger. Uh, it gets rid of any um, parasites, bugs that might be trying to attack those plants uh, because it is a carcinogen. It actually kills those little bugs or at least tells them to go move on to a different plant, and so it protects those plants that you are harvesting. Uh, and it is high in phosphorus, potassium, and nitrogen, so it helps those plants grow back faster, which is awesome. And so I swear by tobacco whenever I um, plant a garden. I need to put more tobacco in my garden <laughs> because I'm having some problems with the birds and with the uh, squirrels. So I need to protect them a little bit more this year. <laughs> but um, when we're gifted tobacco, it's a sacred gift. It's saying thank you. And it's saying that we're on the right path as well. Um, and so let me honor tobacco in that meaningful way. It's connected to spirit. It's connected to our elderly years. And this is why oftentimes when we ask for favors or ask things of elders, we always give tobacco as part of protocol before we ask for anything, um, because that's opening up that connection that we have between our spirits as soon as we offer tobacco, and that's part of protocol. It's about honoring the energy that we're asking for and honoring the energy that's been given. So this is why tobacco is very, very important, and it teaches us to um, have faith, because even though we can't see spirit, we know it's there, just like we can't see the air. So we breathe, so we know it's there. So it teaches us to honor those things that maybe we can't see, but really just to have this thing with them. Um, and with uh, something we pray with, and when I say pray, um, so when we smudge, um, it's a way that we pray. But prayer is different to everybody. So a prayer can be asking for the things that you need, it can be making a wish, it can be um, setting intention. Uh, and it doesn't have to be to any particular deity, so it could be creator or God or Allah or Buddha or Jesus or the big spaghetti monster in the sky or the universe or who knows. But uh, the point is just to focus your intention and focus your energy. That's all prayer is. And so it's really about uh, honoring your journey and honoring who you pray to to get there or what intentions you do to get there. Uh, before we're speaking about my six, uh, I save them and I throw them in the backyard for the little birds. They like them for their nest. Awesome. So today I'm only going to be smudging with sage. And uh, this is a women's medicine, so anybody can smudge with this at any time. Uh, and 
The smudge bowl has four directions here. The bowl itself is water because it holds everything and it's a shell, an abalone shell, so onto the water and the women's medicine. The medicine, no matter what medicine it is, as soon as we put it into that bowl to burn, it is earth. It connects to the earth. It comes from the earth and the ashes will go back into the earth. Um, when we light it on fire, it's fire, which represents our mind, pardon me, a pickup. And then uh, the smoke going up is um, spirit. It's honoring the air. It's honoring those prayers that are connecting. Uh, the cool thing about smudging, too, is there was a study done to see why we smudge. Um, and they tested the air quality of a room before and after smudging, and they found that smudging actually cleans the air. So for any toxins like viruses, bacteria, fungus, it actually got cleaned out of the air. Um, and it pH balances the air, ionizes the air in a room. So it actually makes the air much, much, much healthier to breathe. And so every time we smudge, we remember that. Well, I will start by lighting it with a match and to use more natural materials. As I light my smudge, I'm going to do, I'm going to fan it with my hands. I never want to blow on it because uh, our breath is our life and our life is precious. We don't waste that for anybody. So you always want to fan it with your hands. Um, and also, if you have a feather, you can use a feather. Um, well, as you saw, I have cats, so my feathers do not last long. So I just, I've just just given up having feathers for my side. Awesome. So the first thing I want to do is I want to clean my hands in it. And you notice earlier I took off my jewelry because um, jewelry will hold energy. Unless it's something like that's part of you, like a wedding ring or perhaps a piercing that's stuck in there for a while. Um, yeah, then in that case, you can smudge those things just to get rid of any energy that you're carrying. If you have glasses, you can smudge those as well because that's the way you see the world. First thing I'm going to do is run it over my body four times. So on the four directions in my body. I'm going to smudge my mind so I can think clearly and learn from every person that crosses my path. And to be open-minded. I smudge my ears. I'm very thankful to my hearing this lifetime. Also, so I can be open to hear all of the messages creator sends. I smudge my eyes so I can be open to see all of the beauty in the world. I'm very thankful for my vision may be clear so I can see the truth. I smudge my nose so I can smell danger and cookies. I smudge my mouth so I can speak true and kind words that are helpful and benefit people. I always ask myself, is it truthful? Is it helpful? Is it respectful? Is it kind? If it's none of those things, don't say it. Don't do that. But also so creator can speak through me. I smudge my throat because I'm very thankful for my voice this lifetime. So I can continue to give voice to the voiceless and continue to sing. And that's my gift. I smudge my lungs so I could breathe good clean air. Smudge my stomach so I eat. <laughs> All the food that I eat this day will nourish my body. I'm going to smudge my heart so I show unconditional love, kindness, and compassion to every person in my life, friends, my family acquaintances, strangers, but also with ourselves, because sometimes it's hard to show ourselves a little self-love. We're our own worst critic. But my womanhood, because I'm very thankful to be a woman and a mother in this time. We're two spirit women, but my body this lifetime is here. I'm going to smudge my shoulders and my back. So I can carry all of the responsibilities that creators gifted me with grace and humility. I'm going to smudge my arms and my hands so I can do the good work that creators put me here to do. I'm very thankful for my hands this lifetime as an artist. I'm going to smudge my legs so I can walk this red road in a good way. The red road is the path of Aboriginal spirituality. And then I'm going to smudge my feet so I stay grounded and connected to Mother Earth 
I'm going to tread lightly upon her, honoring her with every step. And then if there's anywhere else in your body that needs a little extra attention, a little extra love, um, if you need some healing there, my mid back has been really sore. My hips, I've had four hip surgeries. So I'm constantly attaching my hips so that I feel better. Um, if there is someone in your life that you want to send love and appreciation to, or if maybe they're going through a hard time and you want to send healing to them, and it doesn't have to always be physical healing, it can be mental healing or spiritual healing or emotional healing, but it's holding them in your heart and just sending them that love, sending them that healing, and sending them those intentions. If they are passing, to help them pass in a gentle way. And then when you're all done, you can say thank you, or mabwitch, or merci, or hi hi, or gracia, or xie xie, or however you say thank you in your language. Then if you want to slash honey. So I'm going to move that off to the side without knocking all the water. Mm. And then I'll share a song. Uh -huh. All right, so we haven't done this song in a while, but um, it's a really beautiful song. Uh, so hold on. And this is Machi, it's by um, Ulali, and uh, it means be proud of who you are, be proud of the blood that runs through your veins. Maybe it's back to Oh yeah. All right. We're gonna do it in two part harmony. Um usually you do it in four part harmony, but we're gonna see what we can do. <laughs>
Fine. Do you want to do the um? Should we do something? No, I'm going back downstairs and watching <laughs> YouTube or something. All right. Well, in that case, we won't do the chickadee fun. So, um, the I was thinking a lot about uh the story of the white buffalo, um just uh because it's kind of really been front of mind so there's so many different prophecies from so many different nations but a lot of them are very congruent and so um the story of the white buffalo so a long long, long time ago um there was a nation and they were they were starving um and they would send their hunters out further and further and further uh through the prairies through the mountains um and then one day there was a pair of brothers and they were um, walking and they saw this really, really brilliant, beautiful, bright light. And they were like, oh, I wonder what's over there. And so they walked towards it. And as they walked towards it, then they came into this clearing. Uh, the figure of a beautiful woman uh, started to come into focus. And as they got closer, they saw exactly how beautiful she was. And she, they were just struck by, you know, how stunning she was. And one of the brothers had very pure intentions and so he started to objectify her and he the moment he started to utter words of disrespect towards the woman he turned into dust and faded away and the other brother who was very respectful and very kind and honored his mother and honored his grandmother saw this woman and stopped looking at her and he just knew that this was a sacred being and so he fell on his knees and he said thank you sacred being for coming to um, coming to visit us and uh, I'm open to hear your messages and to bring them back to my people. And the woman came closer and put her hand on his shoulder and said, thank you, young man. Your brother, his intentions were not pure, but yours are. You have a pure heart and a pure spirit. And now I will share gifts with you over the next four days. And so when uh, the brother walked home, without his other brother, he explained to the villagers what had happened, and all of them were just in shock and awe. Some of them were frightened to see the woman come back and visit them. What if they turned to dust as well? But the brother had faith. He knew that her intentions were pure, so as long as our hearts were pure, then we would be fine. And so the next day, the woman came to the village. Um, all of the people tried to feed her what little they had, but she said, thank you for all the gifts but I do not need them, for this is not my real physical being. And she said, now I'll take you into the clearing and I want to show you something. And so she turned over one and became this beautiful golden yellow buffalo. She said, these are the teachings of the mind. These are the teachings of the yellow people who were, will meet again. And they will guide us through invention, through innovation, and through children's teaching through children's eyes of wisdom and curiosity, we will learn a lot. And then as she spun over another four times, the sweetgrass began to grow. And she began to stand up and said, I will visit you tomorrow. And so she left. And then the next day, the beautiful woman came back. And today, she wasn't clad in yellow. Today, she was clad all in beautiful colors of red. And she said, and today, I want to show you the buffalo. So all of the buffalo that had eluded the people for so long, this is why there was a great famine, there were fields and fields and fields of them. She explained that the buffalo had left because we had forgotten our connection with the buffalo. To ask permission, to only take what we need from the buffalo, and then they will give themselves to us. And people started to remember. They started to remember a lot of what they had forgotten from the elders many, many generations ago. And as they did, the buffalo started to come closer. And closer and closer. The beautiful woman rolled, turned into a big, big, big red buffalo, and she rolled through the dirt four times. And as she did, she picked up four huge piles of dust. And in all of that dust, all of these big trees, these beautiful trees, uh, cedar trees and redwoods grew many, many different medicines. And the woman explained, These are the teachings of the people, our people, the people who are honoring. Mother Earth and the connection that we have to Mother Earth. Carry these teachings with you and never let anyone use Mother Earth. Our animals are all over the Now we'll see you again tomorrow. And she left in a white light. And as she returned the next day, people were full, their bellies were full. 
but they only took what they needed from the buffalo. And there were many, many buffalo left to thrive and to carry on. And there was a respect, a newfound respect and relationship between the people and the buffalo that they had lost for so many years, but it had come back. And as the woman came into the village, she was dressed all in blue and blue. And the people walked with her and followed her. So she said, today you will follow me. And as she did, they walked very far to this beautiful place where the river met the ocean in that beautiful lake. And all of the people just were shocked at how gorgeous and how clear all of these bodies of water were. They don't remember a time when they were so clear or so healthy to drink. And the beautiful woman turned in a big black box and she rolled over four times. And she said, these are the teachings of water. We will share them with our black brethren. And these are the people who will carry those teachings from the West, who will carry the sacredness of water. And without those teachings, everything will start to go barren. Everything will start to go dry. But when we remember the teachings, the waters we feel, we have a relationship with the water. It's important to honor the people that carry that water teaching. And so as she left, she gave them a sacred vial. And she said, you will know your brothers who will carry the water when you see them, but it will be much darker than you, that they will have a depth of spirit and a depth of emotion that is akin to you. And so she left, and they had the most pure water to drink, and they remembered to keep it sacred. And then when she came back the next day, she again was all in a white box skin, and she seemed to be glowing. She rolled over four times, and as she did, the winds spun faster and faster and faster around her. And she said, these are the teachings of spirit. These are the teachings of movement. But the people who will carry these teachings of connection and movement, they will forget their way, they will forget their path, and they will forget how the wind is sacred and our breath connects us. But we will have to teach them. We, the people of spirit, we, the people of the earth, we, the people of the water, we, the people of the lower nation, of the mind, will all have to teach the white how to reconnect and how to hear the voice of the wind, how to hear the voice of the water and the fire and the animal, the plant. Because if we don't, we will come back to this uh, place of famine, of hardship, of disease and of hurt. But I will return and you will see me at first in the bodies of white buffalo. And you will know that the time is near to teach those people of spirit, those people of movement, that we are all connected and we are all one. And she rolled in her fourth time and the wind got stronger and stronger and stronger. There was a bright flash of light and then she vanished. Those teachings still remain today. The teachings of the yellow people in the East, they have brought us so much wonderful technology and knowledge. The people of the South, they have connected us so much to Mother Earth and those traditional medicines that we know and the traditional ceremonies that we go through each day. The people of the West, they are people, people of African nations. They have this depth of spirit, this depth of emotion, and this depth of rhythm that connects each and every one of us. They carry the waters and the waters behind them are sacred. And we, of course, have the white people, that nation, have movement, where they connected each and every one of our nations. And now it's time to come together as one. We have seen the white buffalo come forward. We have seen white calves, the white spirit bears are becoming more predominant. Those animals know that it is the time to reconnect, and they are a reminder. That is the story of the white buffalo calf. And so on that note, um, I'm just going to show you creator song. So this is the creation song. And um, I thank uh, my friend Mike Sun for sharing this with me. 
um, and allowing me to bring it back to my family. Because when I sang it for my great aunt, who um, she's she's really struggling with remembering. So uh, sometimes when she really gets tired, she almost takes in Cree, which I'm learning very, very slowly, but I'm hoping to learn a lot more so I can communicate with her. But um, when I sang the song to her for the first time that I'd ever share it with her, she sang along, she knew it. And so it's that humble reminder that we're all connected and sometimes songs and stories will come to us exactly when we need them. So this is the creator's song. As, uh, as a contract teacher who comes in and I am able to share with students, um, <laughs> I know that right at the end of September, everybody gets it, like everybody. And so now I'm wondering, how is that going to change? <laughs> um, because there's always that, you know, that flu or that cough or that sniffle or that cold that everybody gets at the end of the month. Because of course, there's all of these new kids coming together and bringing all of these new germs and creating these wicked hybrids. And so it's really interesting that with COVID, um, we're looking at just a different way of approaching health and connectivity. And we kids are just drawn. Like when I'm teaching, even though now people are wearing masks, by the end of the lesson, the kids are closer and closer and closer and closer. Even if they start on their little blue mats in other places, they're always right beside me by the end of, uh, that I'm done teaching. And um, I'm wondering how they're going to be able to navigate that in a classroom setting because that's how kids are. They just want to be close. They want to connect. When they really want to learn something, they're so engaged and they're so in your face about it, uh, which is a beautiful part of childhood. Um, and it's also part of the reason I think everybody's really nervous about sending their kids back to school. Uh, I'm not so worried about my kids because they're older. So um, I've got 12 year old, two 13 year olds, and I have 22 year old, he can fend for himself. But <laughs> um, to know that those tiny, tiny little people who are just learning about you know, socialization, uh, that they're gonna be thrust into those situations um, and 
I mean, you have to constantly monitor them, but we're not hiring the right amount of staff to be able to do that. We don't have the right amount of space to be able to do that. So I'm really hoping and praying that things come together, that we do things smart, and um, that miraculously uh, that we have you know, people making the decisions at the top that will actually start to make good decisions for everyone, not just a small group of friends, but for the greater whole, the public, and the more vulnerable populations that really need them. And so I wanted to share uh, the healing song um, so that you know anyone who is ill uh, can heal, anyone who is hurting can heal, um, those hearts and minds that maybe feel very segregated and separated so that they feel full and they feel deeply connected. Um, this song is just such a brilliant song for healing. It reminds us that we need healing from all over, not just physical healing, but emotional healing, mental healing, and spiritual healing. We need that connection uh, to each and every one of us. And so um, when we sing it, we sing it for four rounds, uh, the four directions of the medicine wheel. The third round, we actually stop drumming. And in that silence, I invite you to invite in you know, those healing uh, that energy that you need. Say those prayers, honor those people, uh, honor yourself. Don't forget to pray for yourself. It's really important to do that. Um, but when we do that, it's just really focusing that strength in that silence, that connection to spirit within that silence and that stillness. And then when that drum comes in, just release all of those thoughts, all of those hopes, all of those wishes, aspirations, release them to the universe so that you know, Creator, God, Allah, Buddha, the spaghetti monster in the sky, um, whoever can do the work with that energy that we need done. The universe is amazing. So this is the pre-healing song. Um, I learned it from uh, a few different elders, and they said it was really important that we share it in this time, because now is the time where we're coming together and we're healing. We're starting to share truth, and truth sometimes is very, very painful, but it's better to learn it now and heal from it and move forward than it is to hold on to it. And so this is the healing. song um this song is and this makes me happy it's uh it's called the laughing song or the happy song it's from the four winds singers um that's who i uh, had learned it from and i'm very thankful to be able to share it because it's just such a wonderful song it teaches us not to take ourselves too seriously which there's a lot of songs that teach us not to take ourselves too seriously which is really really important and so um when we sing it it's it's really about honoring our joy and it's okay to make mistakes and that's how we learn if we didn't make mistakes we wouldn't learn anything and so we need to make mistakes we have to learn those things. and so uh yeah this is the happy song or the laughing song hey, hi, yo.
Um, so, um, I'd like to share, um, I want to share the chickadee song, but Linda's not here, so it's hard to do the chickadee song because it's a call and response. Um, but I'm going to share the I Love You song. So this is the only Blackfoot song I know. Uh, this is called Gitsi Kakomen. So again, it's Gitsi Kakomen. Gitsi Kakomen. I love you. Um, I love and appreciate you. And I think sometimes we need to say that. We have to remember to say that to people uh, when we haven't seen them in a while. Sometimes they just need to hear, you know, I love you or Gitsi Kakomen. Um, especially to ourselves. Sometimes we have to tell ourselves that we love ourselves. In spite of you know all of the challenges that we face, I think it's so important to be able to you know honor the path that we're on and recognize uh, you know the things that we have done and the impact that we make on other people's lives and how important we are to other people, um, but also how important we should be to ourselves and prioritize ourselves. Tell yourself that you love yourself. It's important. Um, and so when I sing that song, I'm going to sing to Mohinsta because that's where I live. I'm going to sing to Mother Earth, um, which is Na'a, because you know, I honor Mother Earth. And then I'm going to sing to everyone, because I miss everybody. And I think it's really important to tell everybody that we love them. And so this is Gitsi Kokomen, the Black But I Love You song. And originally, I think it was sent by Olivia, no, yeah, Olivia Tailfeathers. And she had shared it um, publicly. And then I learned it from two really wonderful uh, Black women. One from Gainai and the other one from the Gas. Oh, wait, sorry, three. And then another one from Pagani. So got all the bases covered. And they all do them slightly different. But um, I think the overall theme is to care about each other and to love each other. So this is the Tika Woman. To share, be shared once a couple of years. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, this traveling song always reminds me of Sharon, and it's always a way to just put you on your path again. But I think um, we need some good bear energy this week. <laughs> we need um, that mother bear energy, that parental bear energy. You know, that uh, energy of like really um, bending our community and holding our community together, and really um, welcoming everybody's voices in the community. And that's what the bear is all about. The bear. It's strength and courage, but it's it's the strength to stand up for what's right, and it's the courage to be yourself because it takes a lot to be yourself. And so, as for um, you know, going back to school, it takes a lot of courage, <laughs> and there's um, 
a lot that has changed in six months. Can you believe it's been six months? Oh my God, I know, like my mental health is amazing considering it's been six months in school. <laughs> but um, it's really about acknowledging that, you know, we're all here together, we're all in this together. If we need help, ask for it. If we can give help, give it. Um, it's really about acknowledging that we're all in our community together and we need to support each other. Because that's what the bear does. The bear steps in when he needs to. The bear will eat what he needs to um, to balance everything. The bear always knows instinctively what to eat and um, when to eat it. He knows if there is a shortage of berries, he'll only eat one particular berry, so we would watch. He knows if the seasons are changing early, he'll get ready for hibernation early, so we'll watch. And so it's really about watching and observing what's happening in our community and how we can fill in those gaps and how we can make the changes to make the world a better place for all of us. And so this is the Anishinaabe Bear song, and this will be the last song uh, until next week. challenge, but um, if we face it together with kindness and compassion, we can get through anything. So, hi, hi, everyone. Um, yeah, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.